This is a quick look at my progress on the portable Voigt Kampf scanner from Blade Runner 2049. I spent the last few days working on getting the code for the device fully written up, including a lot of the animated graphics on the screen and other necessary effects. The assembly is running on a Teensy 3.2 microcontroller connected to a 2.4 inch TFT display. A small speaker is connected for the audio effects. A NeoPixel serves as the primary strobing light for the front of the scanner. The entire assembly runs off a lithium polymer battery, which also has a recharging circuit attached to it so I can top the battery back up as necessary. I've got two switches hooked up to the device at the moment as placeholders for buttons that'll be on the final scanner. When we turn the device on, a high-pitched wind-up noise plays, and the screen flashes white for an instant as it does in the movie. After this, a startup screen with the LAPD logo pops up. A split second later, the device initialization is done, and it animates to the primary scanning screen and awaits further user input. The scanner will sit at this idle screen until one of the buttons is pressed. In the event of the scanning button being pressed, it'll wipe the screen a bright white color and begin to strobe the NeoPixel. It plays an audible scanning sound and remains in this state for as long as the user holds down the scanning button. Once the user releases the scan button, the device flips back to the normal UI and begins populating the screen with analysis and other information. Now that you've seen that, I want to break down the analysis sequence a little bit. It picks a graphic of an eye from one of the pre-generated sets already programmed into the device. It briefly simulates a recording playback of the scanned footage, including blur, focus, and tracking effects. This is meant to show either the device operator's hand swaying slightly during the scan, or the scanned subject fighting back or resisting during the scan. After a short, randomly determined length of playback, the animation will focus on the eye and lock on then zoom in progressively until the lower area of the eye fills the screen. It animates a brief search by drawing dozens of red crosshairs onto the image as it sweeps around. If it identifies the target as a replicant and spots their ID numbers, it then does a final pass where it highlights this code on the white of the eye. Once this initial review is completed, it populates the other information about the target, all of which is procedurally generated. Thumbprint records are reviewed, and the thumbprints shown are random picks from a selection of them on the device. Occasionally, the device may fail to find one or both of the thumbprints for the targeted individual, in which case it may display an error message. On the bottom of the screen, summary information about the target is printed sequentially, including their name, date of birth or incept date, function or profession, and other vital statistics. A few other graphical elements animate during this process, and will finally lock in with highlighted elements in a red color if the target is determined to be a replicant, showing the discovered synthetic markers. Here's another quick demo of the entire process. Now, the other button on the device switches it over to the user profile page, which displays information about the licensed Voigt Kampf operator themselves. These pages will be customizable and can be changed to order, but for this demo I'm just going to use Officer K's profile. These profiles can be tailored for human operators, or even to show an uncertainty regarding the operator's status as a human or replicant, as a nod to the original Blade Runner movie. If you press the button again, it'll slide back to the scan screen. Alternatively, you can press the scanner button at any point and on any screen, and the scanning process will start up without delay. I wanted to make sure that the user could at any point scan a target without having to wait for the device to complete an animation or other cycle. All you had to do was point it at someone and press the button. That's where the device is at this point. I think the only real challenge remaining is going to be to actually 3D print the enclosure and fit all of this inside. But I've been working on a few plans for how I'm going to approach that problem that may dramatically simplify the device's construction. I appreciate you guys taking a look, and if you have any thoughts or advice about any of the display elements, animations, or other features, by all means please share them in the comments below. At the end of the day, I'm just making this up as I go, as the screen used version never really had a working display like this. That's it. Thanks for watching, guys.